So if you did manage to get your emulator working, you'll see a new screen that popped up there. I, I won't be able to show it to you, but you'll see a little screen like a vertical device with a strip of controls on the side of it. You've got a volume control, a power control, a home button, like I've got on a real device. If you press the home button, I think it's a circle on that side strip, it goes to the home screen of the project. It hopefully showed you a screen that said Cordova with a little like cube mascot. Well that was the the basic proof of concept that this works. If you saw it said the Cordova and it said device ready, that's the basic proof of concept that it worked. When you click the home button on your virtual device it takes you back to your home where you've got some icons and you can kind of swipe around, not don't touch the screen, with your mouse and then click on it and actually use it. If you've got a touch screen laptop and you're doing this at home, you will be able to touch your screen like a real device. But if you've got your virtual device, you can click it and click and hold and drag and move from screen to screen. Give that a try. Go see if you can find the web browser in that virtual device. Search around there and see if you can find the web browser. It has Google Chrome. It's an Android device. Open that up and it should go over to the real internet. So this, uh, hopefully you're seeing that you're kind of uh, browsing a, with a virtual device and you can type on your keyboard to type into the, the boxes. So it's like a, a virtual device. Uh, it lets you go on websites, it lets you load up apps and that sort of thing. Uh, it's close to a real device. It doesn't make phone calls or else people would be crank calling everyone maybe. It doesn't do text messaging and such. But with that virtual device, we'll be able to test the various aspects of our projects. Uh, there's a little icon on the side as well to rotate it. You can try rotation and such. This app that was just installed, if you go to the screen where it shows you all your installed apps, should be there. It's called Hello Cordova. We never gave our app a name. The default name is Hello Cordova. So try on your emulator, try to find where are all my apps installed and search around and you should hopefully see Hello Cordova with the little Cordova mascot, the little cube mascot thing. And you click that, it'll go back to the app we made, which simply says Cordova device ready. Try to do that. Try to go back to your Cordova project in the emulator itself. Thank you. 
cause and we're going to be able to just run the command one more time. Click on your command prompt once here, press up on the keyboard. That means right here, mass command. Press enter. Just wait for it to load up again, and I'll maybe this time it'll be a second, second time. Okay. Is keep going and just tap it? No, I contacted Control Talk with developer at Time Twitter and said, Why don't you do this new version? I said, Oh, I'm going to do this new version today. They're going to focus on Visual Studio instead. Oh, okay. So well, the, the difference is instead of typing in the middle, we're doing top load to build in. We're going to write Cordova build because that was in the basic Cordova, not the typical version. Okay, not the So this is definitely a version. that one a little bit and it does focus more on, on more of the Intel's version of a part of the things that are in trouble. So by using this do, do we need a special command like the capital amount or just I think so but I think they focus more on the interface version. Mm -hmm. Okay. 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 Right, so uh, this, uh, just for you to look at, uh, there's that emulator that's running, and um, you, I, I don't have it because mine crashed, but you probably had a second command prompt window open up. It did its own thing, and then the actual Android window opened up. 
if you close, don't close it, but if you close the command prompt window that came from this one, it will close your, also your emulator. So don't close those, because then it closes your emulator and you have to wait for it to come up again. On mine it never did, uh, on yours it seems to come a lot faster, that's fine. But, um, so I have the command prompt window again here, I've got my emulator running, and I've got the command prompt that created the emulator. You go back to your command prompt here. Um, it's waiting for, for more input, so you, you click there, the little cursor is blinking, what's the next command? Let's type um, uh, Cordova platform add browser. And enter. Browser is web browser, specifically Google Chrome. We've got another way to test our projects in the web browser. One useful reason to do this is we can then pull up the um, developer tools. We're still going to write HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, and there could be errors that happen. I want to see those errors in the command prompt. So I want to open my project in the web browser. Uh, we need to do it this way rather than simply opening the raw code. If we open the raw code in the web browser, it's not a, a mobile app. It's a web app. There's a subtle difference which will make more sense in a moment. But after you've got the browser project added, let's click Cordova run browser Cordova space run browser I want to run this project in the web browser you do need Google Chrome for this to work if you have Firefox it won't work or any other browser you need Chrome Cordova run browser it's gonna process it bring up your web browser if you see a message about set as default just ignore that you're going to see there, Apache Cordova device is ready. Very similar to what you saw when the actual Android emulator was running, but perhaps a lot faster. And here in the web browser, Google Chrome, hit F12 to bring up the console. And then you can hit also, remember the device emulator. From this console view, you can then go to Toggle Device, select something like iPhone 6, and you can kind of get a, a semblance of your project working on an iPhone. Obviously, the operating system of iPhone is not there, and I cannot do anything else that an iPhone can do, but I can kind of test my project on a, from a Windows computer, kind of on an iPhone, or uh, an iPad Pro, right there, in Chrome, in the device emulator, the built-in device emulator of Chrome. We can look at it as, as a Galaxy S5, as a Nexus 5X, These icons down here don't do anything, and our reception is bad. But these, uh, this is kind of emulating it like also a device, uh, although in the browser, and I have some console feedback. I have an error, that's about a fave icon, don't worry about that, and then received event device ready. Index.js, line 42. So all of this that we're doing is an HTML project. We're going to take a break in a moment, but let me leave you with this. Now, if you go, if you minimize everything and go to your desktop where you've got your test 01, double-click it, back in the safe and friendly graphical user interface. Inside of here are a bunch of folders, which we'll look at in a moment, but open the www folder. CSS, Images, JavaScript, Index, HTML. Right-click Index HTML, edit with Notepad++. 
So everything in this WW folder is a web page. And that app that you saw on the virtual device or the virtual device browser, or when we get to it, a real device, it's just HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And if you start to explore that a little bit, we'll talk about what all of this is, of course, and how to change it and what it and how it works and all of that. But we're gonna take our first break and then maybe you wanna poke around in those folders for a moment. Don't change anything yet. But maybe poke around in those folders a little bit and and see what's in there in this kind of basic structure. We'll look at it in a moment. Let's take our first break. And this is our first step to creating multi-platform uh, apps on basic web technologies. It's 7.20, we'll be back at 7.30, and we'll go on.